and I'd like to say this, that the only reason why I have gotten into the car game so heavy, right? Well, I mean, I love them very much. But on our first podcast, however many years ago it was, you were like, you like, you need a fucking, you asked me like, what do you do for fun? I'm like, yeah, I work out. I'm like, well, that's not fucking no. fun. I mean, I think it's fun, but like. It's, it's not a hobby. It could be fun. And right. Enjoyable. Okay. This is exactly what you told me the first fucking time. I get it. What I'm saying is. I'm consistent. Yeah, <laughs> you are consistent. <laughs> Is that, you know, like I needed a hobby. I needed something. And it's funny because um, I was talking to the wife of another car guy, a good friend of mine. His name's Albert. And she was like, you know, Al's like a old school gearhead. You know, he uh, works on ACs, like really great dude. And she was like, you know, he really needed this community and this like hobby. You know, and I was like, I feel that. You know, like, I, I understand that. And for me, it's like a opportunity to just, like, be challenged by something that's not, like, my day-to-day challenge. And I I love that. I, Feels I, good. I mean, I, I love it. I mean, they're also, like, it's a, it's a rolling, cool investment, right? Like, you know, cars are a lot of fun, and they break down all the time. But whatever, it's part of the it's part of the culture. But, you know, I a lot of it stems from, like, that one conversation I had with you. I'm like, what is my hobby? I don't really have one. Don't you, you know? feel better that you do? You have an outlet. I, I mean, for I, a hundred percent feel better that I do. I, I, I love them. I love the culture. I love talking about them. I love like the fact that it exits me from like my day to day grind. You know, it's like uh, it's great. But I want to go back to the self conversation point that you just said. Self talk. Yeah, self talk. Self talk. It's tough. It's. I, I like my whole existence is self talk. Whether it's in the kitchen or when it comes to using or like, you know, playing a lot of tennis now. Like tennis is so full of self-talk. Well, like, you're by yourself, right? Yeah. You're like, even professionally, like when you play tennis, those guys are on an island. Yeah. There's no, they're not even allowed to have coaching. You know, you, you can't talk to your coach. Oh, you're not allowed to have coaching? There's no coaching during tennis match. No shit. You're literally there on an island by yourself, full of your self-talk when, when whatever you're saying is what's going to give you the mental edge or not. Wow, I didn't know that there was no coaching. No, I mean you have coaches, but not during play. Hmm. Like you can't like under switch over when you're changing sides in the court. You can't like get a little pep talk or like a yo go to his fucking totally on left corner. Yeah. Wow, it's worse than being a pitcher. Yeah, pitcher. You go to the dugout. You can talk to the coach. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I've I've learned that in the last like year, like post COVID. I don't know. It's been a year year plus, I guess. Right. Um in this post COVID COVID world, self talk is heavy, man. It's like did I did I make the right move here? Did I do this right? And it's like, man, so many fucking days it's just like I sit in my bed staring at the fucking ceiling like, man. And just talking. Like uh, to myself. This is I try the best I can to fill it with positive self talk. Like, it's tough. And but like so, you know, yeah, positive self talk. Not like pat myself up like Oh, you did so great. You're so awesome. But more like, I'm so grateful that we made it through COVID. I'm so grateful yeah. that I have a beautiful family, a great team at the restaurants. Restaurants, I'm grateful that all my friends' restaurants made it. Uh, I'm I'm just trying to be in, full of gratitude yeah, yeah. more often than not. And it's like, because I can get stuck in my head and be like, and you know, I wish I had a bigger restaurant. I wish I had a liquor license. <laughs> you know, I wish I had like a bigger staff. I wish I had a nicer car. I wish I wish whatever. But and like that can like I can easily focus on all the things I think I deserve and don't have, or I can fucking be like grateful like of everything I do have and all the opportunities I have with my family, with my restaurants. Like, you know, fucking ten years ago when I started Blue Collar. I never would imagine I could take a fucking Wednesday night off and sit at a friend's restaurant where he has the night off too, or at least not not working the line at the time, smoking a cigar, doing a podcast. Right. That would be like absurd. So like I could think, yeah, like, you know what? There's a fucking like hundred thousand dollar AP watch I would like to get, (laughs) which that would be nice. But I'm like, you know what? Sitting here with Mike and Nick smoking a cigar, hanging out, is also really nice and i'm grateful to have that opportunity and i'm just as happy doing that